Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about capnography. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe the channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What is capnography? The term capnography refers to the non-invasive measurement of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in exhaled breath. Moreover, it provides a breath-by-breath -breath analysis and a continuous recording of ventilatory status. Now, let's discuss what is capnogram and what is capnograph. Capnogram provides a real-time waveform record of the concentration of carbon dioxide in the respiratory gases. Whereas, capnograph provides waveform plus numerical value as shown in this image. Now, what is N-tidal carbon dioxide? In short, we call it ETCO2, which is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide at the end of an exhaled breath. To understand capnography, we must have a clear idea about the respiratory cycle. The respiratory cycle consists of two components, inspiration and expiration. There are two concepts, oxygenation and ventilation. These two are entirely different mechanisms, but they both rely on the respiratory cycle. Oxygenation relies on the inspiratory phase, whereas ventilation relies on the expiratory phase. Oxygenation refers to the amount of oxygen available and utilized, whereas ventilation refers to the amount of carbon dioxide produced during the metabolic cycle of the cells and exhaled from the body. Both oxygenation and ventilation are needed in proper proportion to sustain a quality life. Now, here comes determination of oxygenation and ventilation status. In determining the oxygenation status, invasively, arterial blood gas analysis is done to determine the partial pressure of oxygen. Non-invasively, pulse oximetry determines the SpO2 level. Now, in determining ventilation status, invasively, arterial blood gas analysis determines the partial pressure of carbon dioxide level and non-invasively, capnography determines the ETCO2 level. This is measured breath by breath at the end of the expiratory phase of respiration. Now, Pulse oximetry versus capnography or oxygenation versus ventilation. Oxygen is needed for metabolism. SpO2 measures percentage of oxygen in RVCs and reflects changes in oxygenation within 5 minutes. CO2 is the end product of metabolism. ETCO2 measures exhaled carbon dioxide at the point of exit and reflects changes in ventilation within 10 seconds. In short, capnography gives an immediate picture of the patient's condition whereas pulse oximetry is delayed. For example, when connecting to capnography and pulse oximetry and you hold your breath, capnography immediately shows apnea whereas in pulse oximeter, oxygen saturations will remain normal for a prolonged period of time. Capnography provides instantaneous information like ventilation, perfusion, and metabolism. Regarding ventilation, it explains how effectively carbon dioxide is being eliminated by the pulmonary system. Regarding perfusion, it explains how effectively carbon dioxide is being transported through the vascular system. And regarding metabolism, it explains how effectively carbon dioxide is being produced by cellular metabolism. Now, let's discuss the types of devices used to monitor ETCO2. Semi-quantitative capnometry, under which comes calorimetric ETCO2 detector. It contains color change assay, that is purple, tan, and yellow. There is no number or waveform in this and it only explains if there is ETCO2 or not. Next is quantitative capnometry 
which only gives number and there is no waveform. And the other is quantitative capnometry, which gives both waveform and number as shown in this picture. Now comes the capnography device setup. There are many types of CO2 sensor like mainstream CO2 sensor, side stream CO2 sensor and micro stream CO2 sensor etc. Here we are going to see about the setup of mainstream CO2 sensor. At the terminal end of the ET tube, the mainstream CO2 sensor is connected and at the other end of the CO2 sensor, the breathing circuit is connected. The cable from the sensor connected to the monitor displays the CO2 waveforms. Now, why is capnography used? There are so many clinical applications. For example, ET tube placement verification, monitoring airway or ventilation during sedation, detect breathing or apnea, ventilator malfunction, assess ventilation during CPR and detecting written off spontaneous circulation during CPR, detecting prognosis during CPR or resuscitation. Next comes ETCO2 values. 35 to 45 mmHg is the normal range of ETCO2. When it goes beyond 45 mmHg, we call it hypoventilation. In hypoventilation, respiratory rate decreases, which in turn decreases the gas exchange and thereby ETCO2 increases. When it goes below 35 mmHg, we call it hyperventilation. In hyperventilation, the respiratory rate increases, increasing the gas exchange and thereby ETCO2 will decrease. Let's discuss about the factors affecting ETCO2. Causes of increased ETCO2 includes reduced respiratory rate that is hypoventilation, reduced tidal volume, increased cardiac output, increased dead space, rebreathing or breath stacking, and hyperthermia. Causes of reduced ETCO2 includes increased respiratory rate that is hyperventilation, increased tidal volume, reduced cardiac output, pulmonary embolism, hypovolemia, hypothermia, etc. Now, here is the normal capnography waveform. The x-axis or height shows the amount of CO2 in mmHg. The y-axis or length depicts the time. AB denotes the baseline where B is the start of alveolar exhalation. BC denotes expiratory upstroke. CD denotes expiratory plateau. And D denotes ETCO2 value. DE denotes where the inspiration begins. Let's discuss the same thing face by face in detail. This is the normal capnography waveform. Phase 1 starts from A to B, otherwise called dead space ventilation. Why? Because there is no gas exchange in the upper airway, which is often called the dead space. In phase 1, there is ending of inhalation and beginning of exhalation and carbon dioxide is not present during inspiration and hence the baseline is zero. Next comes phase two which is from B to C and is called the ascending phase. In phase two, carbon dioxide from the alveoli reaches the upper airway and mix with the dead space air. This causes rise in the amount of carbon dioxide and is detected in exhaled air. Next comes phase 3 which is from C to D otherwise called alveolar plateau. In phase 3, the carbon dioxide from the alveoli has reached the airway exit. The exhaled air is now rich in carbon dioxide and hence the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air is uniform. The alveolar plateau is flat with a slight upward tilt towards the end. 
This plateau illustrates the uniform concentration of carbon dioxide in the pulmonary system. One more thing in phase 3 is D, which is the end of phase 3 and it indicates end tidal CO2. The end of phase 3 is also called the end of exhalation. Termination of the breath cycle contains the highest concentration of carbon dioxide and is called the end tidal CO2. Next comes phase 4 which is the descending phase from D to E. When inspiration thus begins again, the amount of measured carbon dioxide quickly drops to zero. The rapid descent to baseline is shown here between D and E. The return to baseline is called phase 4. This phase shows the beginning of the next inhalation because Oxygen fills the airway and the carbon dioxide level quickly drops to the baseline. Next comes the end tidal carbon dioxide waveform assessment. When you look into the monitor, the following components are very important to assess if the waveform is normal or abnormal. Waveform, baseline, expiratory upstroke, alveolar plateau, inspiratory downstroke. Here comes the ABCs of waveform interpretation. First comes airway. Here you can check for signs of obstructed airway which is indicated by steep upsloping expiratory plateau. Next comes breathing. Check the ETCO2 reading and waveform and here you can see an elevated respiratory baseline. Next comes circulation. Here you can check the trends of ETCO2 waveforms for 15 to 30 minutes or longer and identify if they are increasing or decreasing. Here comes certain clinically important abnormal capnography waveforms for your knowledge. This is the normal capnography waveform where all the phases are within the normal limits. And if we look at the ETCO2 value, it is 42 mmHe, which is also within the normal range that is between 35 to 45 mmHe. Next comes the waveform, which denotes hyperventilation. In this type of capnography waveform, the ETCO2 reading is initially within the normal range. As the respiratory rate goes higher, the ETCO2 reading drops down and the waveform goes narrower. The causes for hyperventilation are increase in respiratory rate and tidal volume, metabolic acidosis, fall in body temperature, pulmonary embolism, hyperventilation syndrome, etc. This image shows the short term trend of hyperventilation waveform. When you have a look at the long term trend of the waveform, it gets more narrower than this. Next comes hypoventilation waveform. In this waveform, the ETCO2 value will be gradually increasing because the respiratory rate starts to decrease. The reasons are decrease in respiratory rate and tidal volume, metabolic rate increases, rise in body temperature, narcotic overdose, heavy sedation, CNS dysfunction, etc. Next comes the waveform with loss of alveolar plateau. In this type of waveform, there is no phase 3, that is, there is no alveolar plateau, which indicates incomplete or obstructed exhalation. The waveform is specifically termed shark's fin pattern waveform. The causes include kinked or occluded artificial airway, foreign body in the airway, obstruction in expiratory limb, and conditions like asthma, COPD, etc. Next comes waveform with elevated baseline. If we look at the waveform, there is elevation in the baseline, which indicates incomplete inhalation or exhalation. 
carbon dioxide does not get completely washed out on inhalation. The possible causes are faulty expiratory valve, inadequate inspiratory flow, partial rebreathing, insufficient expiratory time, and rebreathing carbon dioxide due to fault in the ventilator circuit, etc. Next comes the sudden loss of waveform. There is complete loss of waveform which indicates no carbon dioxide present. This may be due to apnea, airway obstruction, dislodged airway, airway disconnection, ventilator malfunction, cardiac arrest, etc. Next comes cardiac arrest or poor perfusion waveform. This image shows a 30 minute trend of capnography waveform, which indicates perfusion during CPR and effectiveness of resuscitation efforts. If you notice this image, there is a trough formed in the center of the capnogram. This trough is formed when the first rescuer takes the hands off during CPR and the second rescuer takes the turn for the compressions. After the second rescuer takes the turn for the compression, we can notice the elevation in the waveforms. Next comes the return of spontaneous circulation waveform. If you notice this image, there is a dramatic change in the ETCO2 after the patient has been defibrillated. Hence, using continuous waveform capnography can make a life-saving difference during cardiac resuscitation. Why? Because it indicates the quality of chest compression and it detects the return of spontaneous circulation without interrupting resuscitation. So, these are the important clinical waveforms a nurse needs to know. Another important thing a nurse needs to know when CO2 is not detected, three factors must be quickly evaluated for possible causes. Loss of airway function, loss of circulatory function, and equipment malfunctions. Loss of airway function may be due to airway obstruction, apnea. Loss of circulatory function may be due to massive pulmonary embolism, cardiac arrest. Equipment malfunction may be due to improper mask seal or tube placement. So this is all about the different waveforms and if you have not watched the introduction on capnography, you can find the link in the description below. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.